welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangi. I remember we did a five-part series when Justice Chandra Chud took over as the Chief Justice of India on November 9, 2022. And it was very interesting those days because we titled that whole series as Hope. There was a lot of hope that Justice Chandra Chud is becoming the Chief Justice of India. And uh, of course, a lot of that hope has been realized with the kind of uh, in a sense, directions that he has been passing as a chief of the court, uh, which my panelists will talk about more. Also, uh, it is the time to celebrate the 150 days of his taking over. He's the 50th chief justice of India who has completed 150 days in office uh, today uh, as we record this show. Uh, and it is indeed an occasion where we will go back and reflect on what all has been achieved, what remains to be achieved. Uh, and also go back on a few administrative decisions, uh, digitization of courts, etc. And of course, we all know how much he has pushed for digitization and uh, even to judges, even for lawyers appearing before him. Indeed, we got to discuss all of this today and a lot more. I have a very eminent panel with me. May I welcome Justice Arjun Kumar Sikri. Uh, Justice Sikri uh, has served as a judge of the Supreme Court of India. Uh, he is a sitting judge at the Singapore International commercial court, but most of all, all of you know him as one of India's busiest arbitrators. Very difficult to, very difficult to get his time, but uh, he's been kind. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, you. good to see you. Uh, I have with me Ryan Karanjawala. Uh, he is managing partner of Karanjawala and Kami, one of India's leading litigation law firms at the Supreme Court of India. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for joining us. I have with me senior advocate Parak Tripathi. Now, anybody who's who's doing any level of business in India at a significant scale knows Mr. Parak Tripathi because he's known one of India's top counsels at the Supreme Court of India and also other forums, a very fine commercial mind, who, of course, you would be reading about every other day on one big commercial case or the other. Uh, so nice of you to give us time and join us for this show. Thank you so very much. Uh, at the outset, may I request uh, Mr. Ryan Karanjawala that in the first two minutes or so, uh, if you could lay the ground for this discussion, then we move on. Uh, over to you, Mr. Karanjawala. So the question you're asking, Tarun, is what are our impressions about how his first 150 uh, days have been? And what are the things that he has been able to achieve? So I think there are four things that stand out. The first is very fortuitous, but though it was unsaid at the time in which he took over, there was a certain sense at the bar that he might take over and head a court that was not completely united. But somehow, due to a lot of circumstances, and uh, the, we now find that he has been able to unite all the judges behind him. They have stood full, um, bang, fully behind him, on the aspect of judges being appointed to the Supreme Court and to the High Court. He's been able to achieve a situation where eight judges were appointed to the Supreme Court. Today, the Supreme Court sits in its full strength. He, they've been able to recommend 35 names for the High Court, seven of which are women. And this is something where, by which, as you will see, all the judges seem to be, broadly speaking, in one voice and in one direction. So that's, I think, his first and most important achievement unification of the court. The second thing that they've been able to do is, and this is a feeling that I really look more towards uh, Parag and uh, Justice Sikri, see, uh, seeing as to whether they agree with me or not. But somehow I get the impression that in this 150 odd days, the court has started tilting more towards the citizen and a little more away from the government. So bail's the conditions under which bails are granted have suddenly started becoming easier. There used to be this old system of handing over government, handing over a sealed envelope and judges looking at the sealed envelope and then deciding matters. That is being slowly done away with. Suddenly the election commission and how it is to be appointed has uh, been scrutinized and a new format put in place. So you suddenly find that in the seesaw between the powers of the state and the rights of the citizen, the rights of the citizen have got a slight upliftment. That's, I think, the second thing I think that one can say about his tenure. The third thing is that despite all this, there has been an emphasis on disposal. In fact, I read statistics somewhere which said that in the first 100 days, he disposed of over 14,000 cases and, only, and less than 14,000 cases had been filed. So in a sense, 
he was able to dispose of more matters than were filed in the court. He's put a new system in place where 10 transfers and 10 bails are heard by every court every day. He's permitted the hybrid mode of hearing to continue. And he also constituted a special green tribunal, which disposed of over 100 matters in which projects had been stored. So that, I think, is as far as disposal is concerned, it's been a very positive development. And of course, the fourth thing is that he has a, a passion for technology and the use of technology in the judicial media, uh, in the judicial space. So, you know, he's moving towards paperless courts. He's moving towards live streaming. He's put a portal on which you can get 34,000 odd judgments to look at and read. He's contemplating and experimenting with artificial intelligence being used for the translation of judges in uh, judgments in regional languages. So these are all things that are happening and these are, I would frankly say, work in progress. In my view, these are the broad four things which well, I look at his tenure, which I see. Okay. Thanks. Thanks so much for that opening uh, comment. Uh, I'll now go to Justice Sikri for uh, reflecting on uh, from somebody who served at the Supreme Court of India uh, uh, and uh, also now is at the Singapore International Commercial Court uh, and a leading arbitrator as well, uh, uh, if, who my, uh, not me, the whole industry refers to as one of India's busiest arbitrators. So he has a very fine view of how the, the arbitration fraternity also views the court. If you could reflect on all of these things, including the arbitration fraternity, which now you represent in you know very glowing terms. Yeah, thank, thank you, Taran. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, Ryan has said uh, about the four uh, achievement, significant achievement in four areas, uh, he has virtually captured everything. But uh, let me say it from, uh, uh, I mean, maybe some of the things, same things, and maybe some things I, some of the aspects I uh, say in a Boy, different manner. Uh, everybody knew even before he became Chief Justice. And that is what he has shown uh, from day one when he was appointed as Judge of the Bombay High Court. That is his intellectual capacity and uh, his uh, wisdom. Uh, how he would uh, look at the cases and his decision making and writing very quality judgments. So he has been showing it uh, from his uh, days uh, from Bombay High Court. He uh, continued with the same spirit rather even uh, in a better manner when he came to the Supreme Court. And uh, therefore, everybody knew that uh, he is uh, uh, one of the best read academically also, otherwise as well. And uh, he can uh, have the grip of the matter very early. And while writing the judgments, he is not that he will be only deciding the case. In the process, he would be laying down the law or rather expanding the horizons of law and the principles of law, and which is very necessary for any judicial system in the country. And this thing continues and we expected that it will continue. This thing continues even when he becomes uh, Chief Justice of India. So <laughs> insofar as his decision making on judicial side is concerned, uh, I mean, nobody uh, can say anything about it and rather, uh, I mean, uh, can say anything against it. And uh, every, uh, as I said earlier, also 10 out of 10 as far as that aspect is concerned and this field is concerned. And, uh, but uh, what uh, he has, uh, uh, I mean, after becoming Chief Justice of India, he has decided and to some extent, I would say that it was started by Justice Lalit as well, that the... Uh, important constitutional matters. And there were many, many matters raising very, very important constitutional aspects which were pending. And some of these have uh, political flavors as well. And uh, uh, so, uh, of course, Justice Lalit had constituted those benches. So he is going ahead with that uh, mission in mind that, yes, all these should be taken care of uh, because... Because if you remember when these issues were pending, there was not only in judicial fraternity or rather legal fraternity, but uh, public at large were also thinking that why these cases are pending, why the Supreme Court is not deciding. So now the, the, the he has set up those benches, not only of himself, but uh, other constitutional benches also, which are now trying to decide uh, these cases, which is a really good trend, which he continues. And... Uh, 
uh, as uh, uh, here in this process, I would say as what uh, Ryan mentioned about that the uh, court tilting in favor of uh, more in favor of the citizen and uh, uh, wherever government is to be, uh, I mean, cut, the powers of the government, etc. are to be curtailed. I mean, of course, within the framework of the constitution. And that process is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, this, uh, uh, I would say, instills faith in the people. The institution survives or institution, institution prospers, uh, as particularly I'm talking of judicial institution, only on the trust of people. So people trust is very, very necessary, which is not only restored, but it is enhanced to great extent during in last 150 days uh, because of so many things which he has done. And particularly, which Ryan also mentioned, and I'll say, and that uh, talks of even transparency as well, that sealed cover. Yes, in a, in a decision-making process, sorry, we are not uh, here for sealed cover. We, whatever has to be done, and naturally that is what is expected that uh, in any hearing of any judicial matter, whatever one side presents should be known to the other side also. So, uh, and other side is give, should be given a full chance to meet that. And therefore, where's the question of any sealed cover? And he has come out very clearly uh, regarding that. And that recent judgment of on, on this uh, 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 freedom of press as well, which uh, he has uh, uh, removed the ban on uh, uh, that uh, uh, newspaper there. And so th this is, again, remarkable judgment. Not that these kinds of judgments were not there earlier. But in today's scenario and in today's environment, giving of these judgments becomes very, very important insofar as restoration of the faith of people is concerned. So that is his... Uh, judicial side. And here I would add, and uh, I would again, uh, I, I mean, uh, say what uh, 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 Ryan has said, uh, he has put it like a unity of the judges, his court is restored. I would say same thing, but as a team leader, he has believed in teamwork and he's taking everybody along. As I know, not that because after my retirement, I would not like to uh, unnecessarily interfere or see what is happening. It is uh, their forte and they have to, but we come to know at least what is happening sometime inside. Uh, I, I mean, information also uh, comes to our knowledge. But uh, I have seen whenever he has to take decision on certain important matters on the administrative side and or other on, about the functioning of the uh, Supreme Court and even uh, uh, because as a head of the institution, uh, Chief Justice is not uh, head of only the Supreme Court. He is called Chief Justice of India, not Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, because he is the head of entire uh, judiciary of India. So therefore, whenever the decision is take, to be taken about not only Indian Supreme Court, functioning, etc., important policy matters, but uh, uh, if it is in respect of some high courts or in district judiciary, etc., he consults his colleagues. He takes their inputs. And uh, this uh, uh, obviously would result in better decision making. And that is what he's doing. And that is then uh, uh, catering to the judicial reforms also. So many judicial reforms at various levels, in addition to the appointments which have been made during this period, which Ryan Brown pointed out. So therefore, <laughs> that is uh, one aspect, the teamwork. And then as a... Uh, as I said that when it comes to judicial reforms and at so many level, and I'll just simply give the initiatives which he has taken. Everybody knew and everybody knows, even when, when he was not chief justice, he was the <coughs> in charge of the e-committee in the Supreme Court. And uh, even at that time, he was trying to bring uh, uh, various reforms and uh, uh, improvement in the technology, et cetera, which chance was given because of COVID. We know how much... Uh, um, I, I, I mean, uh, this technical uh, tech, uh, uh, technology or the, the upgradation of technology which has taken place uh, in the Supreme Court as well as in the high courts and subordinate courts, which uh, continues even now. If you remember talking and even persuading the advocates also, paperless court, let, let this case be argued when neither we will, that is the members of the bench, nor the uh, uh, advocates who are arguing will have a single paper. So uh, uh, apart from that, uh, the specific, if I tell you only uh, what is happening is, which I noted some of this, 
ESCR, this uh, which he has introduced, and uh, uh, which is uh, this is uh, called uh, Supreme Court uh, reports that uh, uh, in e form, and it is not only that all the judgments which are more than thirty four thousand judgments are uploaded in English language, but more importantly that now. the translation of these in, in in regional languages also which is happening and already uh, 3132 which we read a uh, uh, few days ago judgments which are translated in different languages and now are available then uh, interestingly for the functioning of uh, this you know when the uh, lawyers appear in the court and in the in a particular case the lawyers would, would uh, who are going to appear they would go to the court master and give their appearance slip and court master has to keep those appearance slips and when he is drafting the order he has to record all those names this is now again uh, is online appearance slip so so you can give online you don't have to give these slips there etc so very minute things he is thinking uh, where the there can be uh, in e form and without paper we can do it then digitization of records which is taking place and <laughs> there is a very interesting thing for uh, the mem uh, the staff of Supreme Court. There is annual property return module which is framed, and it you can file that online, and you don't have to file that return yourself, which is the requirement of uh, all the employees. <laughs> and uh, in so far, th then he has set up a committee for the welfare <laughs> of the <laughs> employees, etc. and uh, uh, another committee which is very important i remember it may be uh, i have read about that uh, committee i had given th this uh, under the new uh, disability act which was was uh, enacted in 2014 17 uh, there are provisions at all public spaces all public places buildings etc hospitals and all other all public places will be disabled friendly but then said that although and it was to be done within 6 months or 1 year under the act so one pil was filed that look uh, this is the mandate of the act and nothing is happening and i gave that judgment in 2018 or so i think rajiv rathuri is the name of the case where it should be there and we had given those directions must must be uh, i mean that the court must be monitoring it but in order to ensure that because supreme court is also a pub Public place and public building. The, and therefore, it applies to Supreme Court as well. Those uh, some of the directions were there. He has now constituted a committee, uh, Supreme Court Committee on Accessibility, to ensure this. So this shows uh, that that uh, his, uh, I mean, uh, uh, mind is uh, or uh, his heart it as a right place. It's not, and I I know he has all. also given very good judgments on the rights of disabled disabled persons etc so therefore but here is a person who is in action and wherever he can do he is doing it and uh, uh, so this way uh, so many uh, i mean uh, reforms which he has yes. brought on administrative side as well so this is in uh, i mean i would say that yeah he is going in a right direction it is a work in a work in progress as i have mentioned and we hope sure. that he'll thank you, thank you thank you for the opening comment you have covered a large part of what uh, he has done decisions taken and also some judgments i'll go to senior advocate parag tripathi now do i speak to his college classmate am i speaking to somebody who also went to harvard much like him am i speaking to somebody who practices in top commercial cases at supreme court day in and day out uh, i think i'm speaking to a mix of people when i speak to you Uh, could you give me perspective on Justice Chandra Chud, the Chief Justice of India's first one fifty days? Arun, I don't know whom you're speaking to, but I'm speaking about my Chief Justice, <laughs> and I'm very happy doing that. But uh, the macro part has already been very ably introduced by Ryan, as always, and Justice Sikri has covered both macro and micro. therefore i am left with only some inst interstitial comments which i'll make because everything is more or less covered and you won't accept and i agree as an answer so i have i have to be more innovative than that now we have we have well known challenges which are judicial or justice delivery system faces there's a humongous amount of backlog the judge and population ratio is very very low the infrastructure issues are there there are also various other issues and every day in the newspaper we read about the live institutional interface between government and 
and the judiciary. So these are all things which have to be looked at. But on the positive side, we have a very powerful court, very able leadership, and a collegium which is there, collegium of six, which is having both vision, power, and purpose. And they are future looking. So they are not looking merely at uh, firefighting or moving day to day or month by month. They have, they have a forward future looking view, which is very important, which is tempered with balance. We all read uh, the response saying that, yes, we are all entitled to different views. There can be a difference in perception. That's a very nice way to diffuse an unnecessary controversy because one has both the government and judiciary are both moving towards the development and betterment of the nation. So that is what we have to look at. Court has a much added, greater added responsibility of maintaining the, the framework of rule of law. And that is where I think uh, this new push has been extremely, extremely important because we have found that whether it is a transformative option, uh, just like you have a transformative constitution, you have a transformative option of e-courts, of virtual platforms, of virtual hearing, because there were certain tribunals and some of the courts who felt that uh, this is too much of a burden. And uh, the Chief Justice said that, look, this is an option which is always available. And it has, of course, to be improved. And uh, these, are, these are various areas making, as Justice Sikri said, making the uh, judgments available on the website, translating them, and as Ryan said, so many other things which have been done. So therefore, I think, I think the whole focus has been of, if I may say so, institutional chetna, institutional awakening of Supreme Court as an institution, what is its role, which is the way to future, along with humongous amount of uh, uh, activity of an intellectual powerhouse and hard work. So it's a, it's a lot on the plane. And may I end my initial introduction uh, with an interesting couplet of Ghalib, and I'll follow Ryan, and I'll give a very brief introduction. What, what the couplet really says is that I sing. I sing because of my joyous passion. But remember, I'm a nightingale of a Gulshan. Gulshan is that mythical garden of Urdu poetry. I'm a nightingale of a, of a Gulshan, which is not yet fully born. So that is the forward-looking nature of this collegium, in general, and the and the uh, Chief Justice in particular, and the couplet is "Hai garmi hai nishat hai tasavur se nagmasan." Nagmasan is I'm singing. Garmi hai nishat hai tasavur se nagmasan. Main andali be gulshan hai na afrida. Andali is a nightingale of a gulshan which has not yet come into existence. So it is when all these things fructify, then we will have that ideal gulshan where the institutional reforms and the role that Supreme Court sees for itself and also of other institutions and other elements of the, of the state, which will practice. Thanks. Thanks so much for that opening comment, uh, which, which captured, <clears throat> in a sense, your observations of Justice Chandrachur's 150 days. Of course, uh, now we shortly begin part two, in which we will discuss uh, uh, the suggestions that uh, all of you have to make. Uh, so I'll also read out a few statements which he's made over the past few days. Yesterday, he said, need deliberation, dialogue, and not grand So uh, that, that, that is very interesting, you know, where he says, need deliberation, dialogue, not grandstanding, which means a healthy dialogue is essential between the executive and the judiciary. Uh, he also said, disagreement should not lead to hate and violence. Another interesting statement, uh, law should take into consideration realities of communities where it is implemented. Uh, you know, these are a few words or pearls of wisdom that, uh, 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 in fact, uh, one of his statement, which I really like, is the faith of citizens lies in the faiths, in the fierce sense of judicial system. Faith of citizens lies in the fierce sense of judicial system. Such far-reaching words from our Chief Justice of India. I'll go to Mr. Ryan Karanjabala for his opening comment. Any suggestions that you would like to make? Uh, he still has a very long tenure. I mean, we are talking of at least... Uh, now, now it's October 24 that uh, yeah, he's still in office. So we are, we just April. November, November 24. November 24. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me. So uh, it's, it's a long, long time. So there's one thought that I've had, which I've been sort of mulling over for some time. 
which is, of course, we have, as you know, a collegium system. And the collegium exists for certain express purposes. And it's a formalized collegium of judges who come and join in a particular manner at a particular time. And they are there for the purpose of appointment. They're there for the purpose of transfer and other things like that. I was just wondering whether the court would benefit if the Chief Justice also initiated a second collegium, not necessarily a formal one, but an informal collegium of only people who will become Chief Justices. Because you remember that when it is from Chief Justice to Chief Justice, that the baton of law and justice is handed over. Now, if every Chief Justice will presides over an informal collegium, which means that they meet on a regular basis to share views. So what happens is, the people who are going to man the court at the head of the court for the next 15, 20 years or what, whichever period of time it becomes, all sit together, say, every 10 days they meet informally over tea, over coffee, over lunch, over dinner, and share views. What then happens is, in an informal sort of process, their thoughts coalesce together to decide what will be the path that the court will follow for the next several years. As a result of that, if, if they're able to broadly agree, imbibe from each other, then the transition from one chief to another becomes very smooth and very easy. It's like a well-run relay. The baton is handed over and the person has already got a background of how the court is, he's already agreed with a lot of the ways that the court has already been functioning in. So all he does is take it further in a more ex ex extenuated way. If in an informal system, they start this process, of, and the collegium consists of only people who are going to be chief justice of India. It's a sort of a, you know, a, a group within a group. The advantage of that, I feel, is that early on, you will be able to set a direction for the court. And then every chief justice knows that his legacy, in a sense, will also continue. Because the things that he is doing today is an amalgam or a large amalgam of the thought processes that that particular collegium throws up. That might well benefit the court in the years to come. That was just my thought on the subject. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for giving that, uh, in a sense, uh, suggestion and an idea. I will take this to Justice Sajjan Kumar Sikri for his uh, 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 opinion uh, on the suggestions that he would like to give to Justice Chandra. First, let me uh, make a very brief comment on what Ryan has said. Uh, Ryan, if you remember, I think we were the panelist only, and when we were discussing about the tenure of uh, Justice Lalit and the reforms he was bringing, this is exactly what I had said. That many times yes. what happens, chief justices come, they have many good things in their mind. They, uh, they will initiate all those uh, steps. But when new chief justice comes, he thinks that whatever is done is done. Now I have to start off my own and I have my own philosophy. That's right. And in order to take care of that, and the judicial reforms take place uh, on a sustainable basis, as you rightly pointed out, why not there should be a committee of uh, the consisting of all future the chief justice plus all future chief justices so that uh, the baton is passed on and the judicial right. so you have said and in a very nice manner that okay it's a uh, another collegium mini collegium or alternate collegium which is uh, uh, i mean naturally it is not for the purpose of uh, uh, making a point or right. for that that would be the, the first collegium but yes for judicial reforms it would be really a good idea and uh, so therefore i entirely agree with that but to tell you one thing and uh, it would be pleasing to all of you i think he has created one oh yeah wow. it, it's it's not it's a group as you as at least it's we can't call it collegium we can't give any yeah uh, it's any, just any a, kind of it's an informal gathering of uh, yeah, but friends. but uh, but uh, one, uh, 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 I mean, on certain policy matters where he has to, he discusses with the, the all those who are going to be chief justices and that uh, whether it is that such a group is constituted as a formal group or it is an informal group, I may not be knowing, but I know this much that such a group is there now. He has done already. So that is, uh, that, that credit goes to him. And... Uh, I uh, 
as well as and if it's an informal group, it can benefit from once in a while calling judges like Arjun Sikri for their experience. <laughs> no, but Arjun Sikri in any case is not. Uh, uh... Uh, I mean, uh, I would say it uh, doesn't fit the bill or it would not be entitled. <laughs> I'm not uh, past even past chief justice. If you want, if you want to know. call somebody who was chief justice, but you have the experience I don't of qualify many. under that category. But you, have the experience, anyway. you have the experience <laughs> of many. But uh, we are good friends and uh, uh, I mean, of course, he's very busy, so we are hardly able to meet, but... Uh, I know he's open to ideas, he's open to discussion. And let me tell you one thing here. Uh, another thing, it is uh, when, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, this is what he started. Uh, in his 150 days uh, achievement, we should, I think, uh, include that as well. Uh, the the uh, anniversary lecture on the uh, when the Supreme Court was established and the first lecture which was given by Justice Sundresh Menon, Chief Justice of Singapore, uh, I think it was on 4th February 2023. And uh, of course, uh, we know, uh, and I particularly have uh, uh, experience also of his working Justice, uh, Justice Sundresh Menon and the way he has brought reforms in so far as Singapore Supreme Court is concerned. But what I'm telling you is, Last month, I think it was in March, early March or somewhere, one another judge from Singapore Supreme Court had come. He's a very, very good friend of mine. Uh, I think uh, uh, Parag would be knowing him, uh, Justice Ramesh Kannan. And uh, I, I, not, uh, I think it would be, I know that he knows him. <laughs> so when he was here, he met Chief Justice. And uh, thereafter, uh, uh, he had spent one evening with me and he was telling me, that look, I, I, first let me tell you, he's very much impressed by his own chief justice. And no doubt, Justice Sundesh Mena is one of the finest chief justices. And his comments were, when I met him, and in 30-40 minutes our interaction, he's no less than our chief justice. So this is how Justice Chandrachud, uh, I, I mean... Uh, 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 from his talk, from his deliberation and the way they were discussing. So he could uh, really uh, impress him not about uh, from his, uh, I mean, uh, his judicial qualities also, but administrative qualities as well. So therefore, uh, uh, this is one thing. And coming to specific, uh, uh, I mean, apart from this, others, which we know, uh, ch that challenge is there and always there about the appointments, vacancies which are there always and uh, the uh, backlog which is which has tremendously increased during uh, covid and uh, 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 how to uh, the, the, the certain other problems insofar as uh, uh, district court and uh, high court judiciaries etc are concerned and there have been various steps taken from time to time i won't say that steps are not taken to take care of these things. But fact remains that uh, we have not been able to uh, deal with the appointments uh, and uh, vacancies always remain. Uh, even today in the high courts, there would be 20 to 25% vacancies. So challenges that uh, for whatever reasons that uh, erase those uh, causes, which are uh, because of which these vacancies are uh, remain and fill up those vacancies. In the process, of course, uh, the, the uh, another thing which comes and which has been under discussion or rather controversy about uh, executive versus judiciary on appointments, etc. And as you rightly pointed out uh, his uh, speech uh, few days ago, uh, I feel, let me tell you very frankly, although in, uh, notwithstanding what is appearing in the medias and the it may be because of certain statements made by one person or the other, uh, unnecessary statement, which may give that kind of impression. Things are not very bad. And therefore, it is easy for uh, the uh, Supreme Court also uh, to have a better understanding with the executive on these. And so this would be a challenge for him to achieve such a uh, position, at least when uh, the, the impression of uh, from the uh, public also is erased that, no, uh, I mean, uh, we can work together. And of course, that doesn't mean uh, uh, it should not amount to compromising the judicial integrity or judicial independence when it comes to judicial work that is altogether different. Here we are talking only on administrative side when they have to uh, work together. 
So th these are some of the challenges and particularly of areas as well from 30 million cases uh, because of COVID, 30 to 45 million cases. I mean, it's a big, big challenge. How these are taken care of and what progress is made because it, it can't be done in his tenure in two years' time or so. Even if it happens in 10 years, it would be a great achievement. But whether he'll be able to take some kind of, uh, uh, I mean, big decisions and uh, some steps which may be a, or which may bring these results, positive results in next few years. So that is what is to be seen and he has to do that. Thanks. Thanks so much for that comment. In fact, I just also read a headline which he very speaks about lawyers are free to appear online in view of uh, COVID rising courts, <laughs> supporting statement uh, for uh, the legal community. It is openly telling lawyers that you can appear online because suddenly we are seeing a spike in COVID cases. I think uh, senior Parag <coughs> Tripathi, who does a lot of also online appearances, would like to, uh, 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 what you can say, uh, give his word on this and also his suggestions to Justice Chan. No, I think online is extremely welcome. And I think it's, it's, it's a new skill. It's a new skill set. Therefore, it takes time for lawyers. And I think we have to work out a system which is a little fairer to our judges, whether in the High Court or the Supreme Court or the Tribunal, because they are compelled to physically be in court all the time. So that needs to be worked out. Monday, Friday, uh, they should also work from home because that helps the registry. It, it, it helps so many things. But yes, online is here to stay. It's very necessary and it's a great step forward. I think the sense which I get from the... From the uh, uh, extremely well-presented uh, propositions, both by Ryan and Justice Seekin, as always, right, is that there is this collegium, there is this uh, wider body, and that body is proceeding to have a uniform approach, because that's the crucial thing. As Ryan said and Justice Seekin said, the baton has to be passed on in a very harmonious manner, without anybody knowing that it's actually now passed on. That is, uh, if, if you uh, read about the Jayant Tirthankaras, all of them, when they are depicted as a deity, have the same face. That is because if you have evolved, you look the same. That's the theory. So that is how the patent should be passed. That you have to say, oh, the Chief Justice has changed. Right? I didn't find out from the utterances that that has happened. But for that, this is the most important thing. It's a powerful court. There has to be that continued unity of the powerful court. Because if there is a lack of perceived lack of unity of the court, then this interface, the live interface with the government, with other uh, institutions of the state becomes difficult. And today, that is why it's so important to have both the collegium, which is there, with this vibrant and purposeful view, which is in harmony with each other. And this additional, uh, shall I say, collegiate body, uh, which Justice Sikri spoke of, of uh, chief justices who will be taking over the battle. Uh, so that when there is an interface, it is a united front and the, the, the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice and his team have worked out, the, they have thought it through. That is very important. It can't be, uh, uh, it can't be an ad hoc uh, kind of an approach. And of course, that is where I think he as a leader has excelled and has been fully backed by the Collegium. To give a hockey simile, it is when you have a forward line with only one player shoot, uh, going great guns, it doesn't work. But if you have a forward line like India had, like some of the other countries had, where everybody is, is, is going great guns, then that is the forward line to look for. And that is what fortunately is so today because the various judgments Justice Sikri spoke of and a few others have been delivered by the Chief Justice, by his other collegiate members, by other members who are not in the collegiate. That is, everybody is firing at full cylinder. Now, that is very good. But again, uh, we, we have to remember that the challenges are huge and humongous, and it, it will require constant effort and work with everybody, uh, particularly the, at the highest level of the judiciary, to ensure that, that, that these problems are addressed. And uh, the, 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 uh, the gulshan which has been contemplated comes into existence. Thanks. Thanks so much for that. In fact, when I think of Justice Chandrachud, I remember this conversation I had over lunch with one of the chief justices. He said, the chief minister come to me and he asked me that we need your support. He said, of course, you have all my support as long as you work within the four corners of the Constitution of India. So whenever I think of him, I remember this line. I mean, it was an anecdote or it actually just shared. But uh, today, I think we're a great two shows. Uh, 
what i liked about it most is the two shows are over i almost didn't realize uh, so many good points so made time just flew i mean think it always happens when we discuss justice chandra chud that time just flies we'll get another opportunity to a show on him when he completes 250 days which is not too far away we are talking of just 3 months more i think a lot more decisions a lot more utterances uh, he is a vocal judge he speaks his mind also uh, through his judgments and also when he speaks uh, we will get an opportunity to talk about him and what decisions he has taken of course the disposals also we'll discuss that time at least 250 days should pass before disposals are discussed can't be discussed within 3 and 4 months uh, but i would like to thank uh, justice uh, sikri and of course i forgot to make a point he justice sikri has been hearing a lot of arbitrations online which is a lot of people uh, talk uh, in the industry that uh, he also in the arbitration space has taken it big digitally as justice chandrachud is doing it within the courts that also is something which should be appreciated i would like to thank justice sikri for joining it uh, i'd like to thank prayan karanjawala managing partner of karanjawala and company for making time senior advocate parak tripathi has been kind to give time appreciate your joining us and viewers i hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon